Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 22nd of February. Indian Prime Minister Modi receives Seoul Peace Prize for 2018. Grand Council meet Loya Jirga cannot resolve Afghan conflict, says Hekmatyar. And drones steal the show at Aero India 2019. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was on Friday conferred the Seoul Peace Prize for 2018 in recognition of his efforts in promoting global peace and harmony through inclusive economic growth and improving quality of life. India and South Korea also signed six agreements to boost bilateral cooperation between the two countries. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday received the prestigious Seoul Peace Prize for 2018 in recognition of his efforts in promoting global peace and harmony through inclusive economic growth and improving quality of life. The award was presented to him by the Seoul Peace Prize Foundation at a grand ceremony in the South Korean capital. The Seoul Peace Prize was established in 1990 to crystallize Korean people's yearning for peace on the Korean Peninsula and in the rest of the world. The time has come for all those who believe in humanity to join hands to completely eradicate terrorist networks and their financing, supply channels and counter-terrorist ideology and propaganda. Only by doing so can we replace hate with harmony, destruction with development and transform the landscape of violence and vendetta into a postcard for peace. Earlier in the day, the Indian Prime Minister was accorded a ceremonial guard of honour at the official residence of the South Korean President in Seoul. Prime Minister Modi and South Korean President Moon Jae-in later witnessed the signing of six agreements, which includes cooperation in media, police and startups, among others. Bilateral trade between India and South Korea is currently $21 billion and the target that both the countries have set is $50 billion by the year 2030. India's Water Resources Minister Nitin Gadkari said on Thursday that India has decided to stop the flow of water to Pakistan from its share in the rivers under the Indus Water Treaty. This comes a week after India hiked the excise duty on imports to 200% in the wake of a terror attack in its Jammu and Kashmir province, which was claimed by a Pakistan-based terror group. India has decided to stop the flow of water to Pakistan from its share in the rivers under the Indus Water Treaty, regulating river flows between the two nations, India's Transport and Water Resources Minister Nitin Gadkari said on Thursday. The minister said India will divert water from eastern rivers and supply it to its people in Jammu and Kashmir and Punjab provinces. This comes after India revoked Pakistan's status as the most favoured nation and hiked the excise duty on imports to 200 percent last week. The move came after a Pakistan-based terror outfit claimed an attack in India's Jammu and Kashmir province that killed 40 paramilitary police personnel on February 14th. <laughs> Meanwhile, ripple effects of the decision to hike the excise duty on imports to 200% were seen on truck operators and local shopkeepers on the Indian side at the Attari border on Thursday. 
The roads were deserted and trucks were lined up and parked on the roadside. Local roadside eateries were closed. All trade organizations, jitni bhi Indo-Pak trade related associations hai, hum collectively government of India ka ye decision in the interest of the nation. We welcome this. We stand with the government on this decision. Uh, trade is waqt jo hai, wo import bilkul band kar di gai hai. Aur uh, traders in fact khud hi nahi trade kar rahe duties ke uh, notification ke baad. Export already pichle do saalon se through the land route Pakistan ne ban ki hui thi. So trade has almost come to a standstill. The Kashmir terror attack chilled long frosted relations between India and Pakistan, with India accusing Pakistan of failing to crack down on terror groups operating from its soil and saying it would work to isolate Islamabad diplomatically. In news from Afghanistan, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, leader of Afghanistan's Hizb Islami party on Thursday, said the planned consultative Loya Jirga or Grand Council meet on peace will not help resolve the stalemate in the country. The traditional assembly will be held in mid-March to discuss views around peace talks. Leader of Afghanistan's Hizb Islami Party, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, who is also running for president in July 20th elections, on Thursday said, the planned consultative Loya Jirga or Grand Council meet on peace will not help resolve the stalemate in the country. A former warlord Hekmatyar said, the war will continue until there is a neutral and sovereign government in Afghanistan without any links to a foreign country. He expressed presence of foreign troops in Afghanistan is also one of the reasons which is prolonging the war in the country. Talking on the intra-Afghan dialogue, he asked the Taliban to honor the call by the Afghan government for direct talks. This comes 10 days after President Ashraf Ghani called for a grand consultative jirga, a traditional assembly on the peace process in the country, amid Washington's diplomatic efforts to facilitate direct talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban. On Wednesday, Ghani's special envoy for consensus on peace, Mohammad Omar Dodzai, said, the jirga will be held over four days, from March 17th to 20th, and that the participants will share views around the peace talks. More on news from Afghanistan. Locals in Afghanistan's coast province have claimed the Taliban is preventing local clerics from leading funerals of slain soldiers. Relatives of the soldiers said clerics in the province refuse to perform funeral prayers for fallen soldiers as they face threats from the terror group. Residents of Ghost in Afghanistan claimed on Thursday that some clerics in the province refused to perform funeral prayers for fallen soldiers due to Taliban threats. Some clerics in Ghost also confirmed and said they cannot conduct prayer services at funerals because of the Taliban. Meanwhile, the Council of Religious Scholars in Ghost too confirmed the problem. <laughs> Previously, similar reports were received from Paktia province where the clerics also refused to perform funeral prayers for dead security force members. In the past, Taliban has reportedly on several accounts attacked or issued dead threats against clerics who disagree with its interpretation of Islam and those who denounce its interpretation of war as illegitimate. Hundreds turned up for an army recruitment drive held in Baramula district of India's Jammu in Kashmir. A week after a major terror attack in the province killed at least 40 paramilitary police personnel. A recruitment drive was held earlier this week in Baramula district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province where hundreds of youth came to join the Indian Army. The young men were seen undergoing different tests for around 111 different posts in the security force. 
The recruitment camp aimed at solving the unemployment problem plaguing the province while also curbing militancy. Yeah, हमारे लिए बहुत अच्छी बात है क्योंकि हम बाहर भी नहीं जा सकते हैं abroad नहीं जा सकते हैं हम financially कोई problem है या घरेलू domestic कोई problem है हमें तो हमें ये जो provide हो रहा है army की तरफ से ये बहुत अच्छा है हमारे लिए बहुत ये मतलब हमारे लिए हम कह सकते हैं इसको कि बहुत ही bright है ये सर कश्मीर की हालत जब बढ़ती होगी कंटिन्यू ये काम चलेंगे एडजस्टमेंट जॉब मिलेगी उससे ये होता है कि बेरोजगारी भी खत्म और हालात भी पीसफुल होते हैं This comes a week after the Northern Province witnessed a deadly terror attack in Pulwama district which killed at least 40 paramilitary police personnel. The attack was claimed by Pakistan based Jaish-e-Mohammed terror group. A wildlife sanctuary in India's eastern Odisha province has become a tourist hotspot with many people coming in every day to see rare white crocodiles. The sanctuary is also home to python, king cobra and different species of migratory birds. Bitter Kanika Wildlife Sanctuary in India's eastern Odisha province has become a tourist hotspot with many people coming every day to see rare white crocodiles locally referred to as sankwa. The wildlife officials say the sanctuary is home to 1742 saltwater crocodiles and their prized possessions are two white crocodiles. Tourists who come to the sanctuary enjoy boat ride besides cherishing the sighting of rare white crocodiles and the natural beauty of the sanctuary. ये तो नेशनल पार्क डिक्लेरेशन अभी हुआ उससे पहले सैंक्चुरी का डिक्लेरेशन हुआ था इसका प्रोटेक्शन जो अच्छे तरह से हुआ इसके हिसाब से उसका ज़्यादा हो गया सत्रह सौ बयालीस हो गया नब्बे के आसपास था पहले उन्नीस सौ पंचहत्तर में अभी उससे बढ़कर सत्रह सौ बयालीस हो गया तो रास्ते में बहुत अच्छा हमको देखने मिला इवन क्रोकाडाइल भी देखने मिला है और अंदर जाके आप देखेंगे कि बहुत अच्छा सुने हैं लोगों से कि बहुत अच्छा देखने मिलेगा क्रोकोडाइल का और नेचुरल ब्यूटी तो वो हम देखेंगे और एंजॉय करेंगे अपार्ट फ्रॉम टू वाइट क्रोकोडाइल्स द सेंचुरी ऑल्सो होस्ट वाटर मॉनिटर्स पाइथॉन किंग कोबरा माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स एंड अ नंबर ऑफ मैमिलियन स्पीसीज इंक्लूडिंग स्पॉटेड एंड सम्बार डियर वाइल्ड बो एंड फिशिंग कैट्स A first of its kind drone Olympics was organized on Thursday during the ongoing Aero India show in India's southern Bengaluru city. More than 120 teams from different countries displayed their unmanned aerial vehicles during the event. A first of its kind drone Olympics was organized on Thursday during the ongoing Aero India show 2019 in India's southern Bengaluru city. More than 120 teams from India, Israel, Ukraine and many other countries displayed their quadcopters, hexacopters, single and multi rotors and even delivery unmanned aerial vehicles in the competition. The drones participating in the competition were judged on the parameters of stealth, maximum height, vertical takeoff and landing stability and payload capacity. So first time in our country we are organizing uh, the drone olympics. and the idea was to uh, look at where we are in terms of drone manufacturing in our country uh, not just the drones manufacturing but also the payloads and uh, and their functioning and very happy to tell you that uh, we have had a very good response india is the market for drones and india is the next manufacturer for drones so uh, this drone olympic will bring it into focus india is the second top importer of drones bringing in nearly 13% of the total unmanned aerial vehicle or uav market from high tech expensive military drones to toys the commercial space of uavs is large and is used for basic surveillance photography site inspections monitoring crops and collecting geographical data well that's the way it was in south asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again Indian Prime Minister Modi receives Seoul Peace Prize for 2018. Grand Council meet Loya Jirga cannot resolve Afghan conflict says Hikmat Tyar. And drones steal the show at Aero India 2019.
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.